Hey guys, for this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to do um, a probability problem that involves combinations. So with this, what we have is a bag contains seven black buttons and five red buttons. If five buttons are selected at random without replacement, this is the key word right here, the without replacement. That means that your probability of success changes every time you draw something because on the first draw, you have 12 total buttons. Okay, so we have a total of 12 buttons in this. And I got that because I added the seven and the five together. So with this, if you're selecting one without replacement, that means that on the next one you have 11, and then the following you have 10, and then nine, and then eight. So your probability changes each time. So this one would not be a binomial distribution or a binomial probability since it's without replacement. Had it said with replacement, then it would have been binomial because the um, probability of success would remain constant throughout. So whenever it says without replacement, you're not replacing it, you have to use the combination rule. And remember that the combination rule is n factorial divided by n minus x factorial times x factorial. Remember that factorial like if I have five factorial, just to make sure that you guys understand what that means, five factorial means five times four times three times two times one. So in this video, what I want to do is I want to show you how to use this rule without using a calculator in case you have to show the work. And then I will do other ones that show you how to use the calculator and the shortcut. Most calculators today have this already stored into them because it's very um, common to get combination problems. So let's talk about this one. For the first one, <clears throat> we are looking for the probability of exactly three black. That means that what we want is, since we're selecting five total buttons, we want three of them to be black and two to be red. So essentially what we are doing is um, we are taking out of our black buttons, since we have a total of seven black buttons and five red buttons, of my seven black buttons, I want exactly three. So I want seven things taken three at a time. Times, I have my red buttons, I have five of them, and I want to see the combination of taking two of them at a time. And this is going to be divided by my total. Remember, probability is always what you want to happen. So the number of things that could happen this way divided by the total. So in total, I have 12 buttons. And since we are selecting a total of five buttons, I would have 12C5. With your combinations, this value here, the three of the first color plus the two of the second one should equal this value right here. Okay, so if you are not allowed to use your calculator and you have to show your work using this formula, it can be kind of ugly. So let me set up each part individually. So the 7C3, my N would be seven. So I would do seven factorial over N minus X. So if I do seven minus three would give me four factorial. And my X is just my number of successes, so three factorial. And then I would have to set up my next one. So I would have times five factorial over on this, again, it's five minus two, so three factorial, two factorial. The bottom numbers always have to add up to be the top number. Four plus three gives me seven, three plus two gives me five. And then on the bottom, what we would have is, we would have our n factorial, which is 12 factorial over and with this, because we would do 12 minus five, it would give us seven factorial times five factorial, because again, these two numbers have to add up to be the top. So I don't recommend doing this with hand calculations, um, but I know that there are some professors, some teachers that absolutely require you to show all of the work. So this is the purpose of doing that is um, to show you what it would look like if you had to do all of this. So to simplify this, like if you didn't have a cal calculator and you had to do hand calculations um, or show all of your work, seven factorial, what it means is seven times six times five. And I'm not gonna write it all the way out. I'm just going to go to four factorial. And the reason I'm doing that, and you know what, instead of doing it down here, hold on, let me just erase that. Let me go over to the side. I went 
way too far. Okay, um, so what happens here is if I simplify this part, 7 factorial really is 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 factorial. And the reason I stopped there is because in the denominator I have a 4 factorial. So anything divided by itself, no matter how complicated, um, will always be 1. So that's really multiplying by 1. I still have the 3 factorial, so that I'm going to write as 3 times 2. I don't have to write the times 1 because it's going to just cancel out. So we can see that 3 times 2 gives us 6, so these would cancel out here. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and do the next one, but what this ends up giving me is 7 times 5, which is 35. And so that would be the first part. Like I said, this is the really long way of doing it. I don't advise this all the time, but just in case you have to show the work or so that you can see how to work with the factorials. Um, it's always important to understand what your calculator is doing. So on this one, I'm doing 5 times 4 factorial times 3 factorial and I'm stopping there so that these will cancel out. 2 factorial is just going to give me 2. So again, I could cancel this goes into 4 2 times. So if I multiply all of those top numbers, I'm left with 7 times 5, which is 35, um, times 5 times 2. So this is really 35 times 10, which gives me 350. Now for the bottom, if I simplify this out, 12 factorial is really 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 factorial. Again, I'm going to stop there because that's my highest, so I can go ahead and just cancel those out. Okay, 5 factorial, remember, is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And so I can go through and cancel. Um, like, for example, I know that 5 times 2 is 10, so that would cancel out. Um, the 4 goes into the 8 2 times. The 9 I can divide by 3 3 times. And so if I have to multiply this out, I would have 12 times 11 times 3 times 2, um, which ends up giving us 792. And then to find the probability, you are most likely going to plug this into your calculator. You would do 350 divided by 792 which gives us approximately 0.4419, okay? Um, so the probability of selecting exactly three black, the probability of exactly three black is going to equal 0.4419. So there's a 44.19% probability of selecting exactly three black when you are selecting a total of five buttons out of um, 12. Okay, for this one, this one's going to be a little bit shorter because of the fact that I'm going to use the complement rule. Anytime it says at least one, what you want to use is the complement rule, and the complement rule tells us that um, my probabilities when added together will add up to be one. So. For this one, at least one, so the probability of at least one sorry, my handwriting is getting bad, is equal to one minus the probability of zero black. Okay, this will make it a lot easier because of the fact that we already calculated our 12 factorial, the 12 C5 here for our total. Um, we already know that that simplifies to 792 because we did it on the last problem. Okay, um, so the probability of at least one black is equal to one minus the probability of zero black, which tells us that, remember, if we recall, um, we had seven black marbles and we had five red marbles and we're selecting five. So just to recap what we are doing. So that means that if I'm selecting five of them and we want zero of them to be black, that means that seven things taken zero at a time times five things taken five at a time over 12 things taken five at a time. We know that this part down here 
ends up being 792 because we just calculated that on the last problem. For the top part, the 7C0, anytime you take it zero at a time, there's only one way that this can happen because this is really seven factorial divided by seven factorial times zero factorial and zero factorial is equal to one. That is just the rule because you can't divide by zero. So the rule is zero factorial equals one because it only happens one time. There's only one combination possible. For the second one, it ends up giving me the same thing. It gives me five factorial over five factorial, zero factorial, which again equals one. So I'm really doing one minus one over 792. So the probability of at least one black button is going to be approximately 0.9987. So we have a 99.87% probability of selecting at least one black one, which is a really good probability. I know that this was a very lengthy process. Again, um, I just wanted to show you how to use the NCX formula, the combination rule, using your factorials so that you can see what your calculator is actually doing. Um, I will do this with both the TI-84 and the TI-Inspire so that you can know how to do those in those calculators. As always, thanks for watching. Um, please let me know if you have any questions or need additional topics.